Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Uh, I am very grateful for the work that you do um, and for studying counseling, behavioral health, anything within the psychology, marriage and family, social work, all the folks trying to help people heal and thrive. I wanted to talk, this is something that I found out as a student, both in my master's program and also in the doctoral program. And I always share this with students, and I've just decided to do a quick video so I can do it with my internship groups that I have this semester and throughout the rest of my teaching career. But these are things I found incredibly helpful to have successful practicum and internship experiences or field placement experiences, uh, you know, depending on the program that you're in. Um, one thing that I found incredibly helpful, let's just start right away, is spend time getting to know the staff at the agency in which you're working. The more they uh, know about you and trust you, the more likely they are to refer clients for you so that you can get your hours, okay? Because getting the proper amount of hours or you know the sufficient number of hours, which is what you need for experience, building your experience, but also there's requirements in the semester and you need to meet those. So it's just helpful if you are uh, not interacting and they don't know who you are, maybe you're only there a couple days a week, it's less likely that they're gonna say, hey, how about we refer this person? You know, they don't have insurance, they need some help, or maybe a fresh perspective would help this client, uh, so that type of thing. So prior to the semester beginning, please uh, make sure that you get to know all of the staff. Um, the front desk workers are oftentimes the ones that know all the clients, they know all the clinicians, they are a great resource in order to, um, you know, refer clients for you, uh, or at least help in that process. I always wanted to make clients aware that I was grateful that they were willing to sit with me, okay, whether it's individual group or family, as a student at that time, as an internship student. Um, because uh, I was grateful. I needed that experience. I needed the hours so that I could pass my field placement experience. Also, folks, by thanking the clients, people in general, what we know from positive psych, like to be of service. And in fact, it may be one of the most healing modalities is when we are of service to others. Um, a little bit like, you know, what you sow, you reap. Uh, there are different types of analogies we can use there. But make clients aware that not only are you here to help them, but they're helping you by taking the time to sit there and be a part of a counseling session. I think that also helps in bringing clients back, okay? You have one session, you're like, wow, they got to thank me. That was nice. I haven't had many behavioral health professionals thank me for coming in. So a nice thing to do. Another thing I'll tell you, and it's one thing I've noticed over my 20 plus years of supervising students is some clients and, and some students, they just kind of attract clients professionally with good boundaries and so forth. And so one thing I ask you to do is pay attention to your mindset when you're with clients. You know, are you are you stuck and lost in just the issues and the pain and the hopelessness? Because if you're hopeless, you're not seeing the potential. You're not seeing the light of that client. So one quick practical thing is prior to session, do something that lifts your vibration, that lifts your mood a little bit. People are attracted to people that way. This isn't some type of fake positivity, okay? That's not that. It's access a memory, access a quote, access a thought that helps lift your mood so that you're able to be a person of hope for that client. This doesn't mean that you are ignoring all the issues that we have, that clients have and that we have in the world. It's not that at all. But if you are down in the dumps and depressed and angry and sad, clients are gonna feel that energy. They're not gonna wanna come back to you, okay? And if they do, it's not a healthy relationship. All right, I should have added that, but just be aware. Thank your clients. Pay attention to your mood and your mindset. Ask clients when in group counseling. So if at the very beginning of practicum and internship, if you're able to sit in on a group, ask your supervisors first and the group leader. Ask like, hey, at the end, is it possible for me to try to get individual clients by saying, hey, I'm this person, <laughs> I'm the student, 
and I need hours in order first to get experience, but also to pass my class. I am taking a class that has a required amount of hours. Would you be willing outside of group to meet with me individually? Okay. So I always found that incredibly helpful as a way and, uh, and, and was very successful in getting a lot of clients that way. I always chose inpatient sites uh, because um, you had kind of a captive market, and I hate to use that term. I probably should have used something better. But you've got people in a, a where they have been uh, here for intense treatment. And so if I didn't have a client that I was seeing individually or in groups, I could go in the milieu, so visit while they were, you know, hanging out watching TV or, uh, you know, drawing or painting or whatever. And in the milieu, I could kind of hang out and that could also be direct hours, okay, because even that can be therapeutic. It's not intensive individual counseling, but it can be therapeutic to have professional conversations with folks. Find out, you know, how are they when they're outside a group or individual counseling? So um, I know that's not always possible to have inpatient sites, but I did find that helpful. If it's not in an in, in inpatient site, intensive outpatient. So a lot of times your community agencies will have intensive outpatient programs where clients come for, say, you know, 10 to 2 o'clock every day while they're getting stabilized. A lot of times these intensive outpatients are, uh, programs are set up in order to uh, divert from having to go to the hospital, which is very expensive and has all kind of ramifications. But I found if I could have some access to the intensive outpatient, that was another way to get more client experience and hours. We also had a great program where I was a mental health center called Clubhouse where folks with severe and persistent mental illness could go during the day and be a part of a group and help the clubhouse run, make lunch, uh, help with the bills, help with, um, you know, kind of uh, some of the hobbies and stuff that they did. And so that was always a great place to be able to get experience and get to know clients and so forth. And then also be willing to do home visits. You know, I did a lot of home visits and probably what you're gonna wanna do is go with another uh, counselor, uh, another behavioral health provider. And it may get to a point to where you are allowed to go on your own, um, but I found that incredibly helpful in order to get to know clients and understand kind of, you just learn so much when you walked into their home. You do have to be careful of course, make sure that you know the person and all and know, you know, what what you do in an emergency. So and I think I've got something on that, particularly a video related to potentially violent clients. Um, but these are all ways to make sure that you have a successful field experience. And let me know if this is helpful or any other ideas. I would love to hear that so that I can share that with my supervisees this semester. All right, good people. Thank you again for what you do. If this was helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and we will talk to you on our next video. Take care.